Hello, aviation fans! Today we have two reasons for joy. First, our marathon finally reaches the Airbus flagship model, the largest and most luxury airliner in the world. Second, this video is the last one in the marathon, and I will be able to make new videos about something else. Diversity is everything. Ok, let's start. Airbus A380 is a double-deck, wide-body airliner, developed by the Airbus Corporation in the mid-2000s. A380 is the largest passenger aircraft in the world, capable of accommodating 853 passengers. The history of this giant began back in 1988, when the group of Airbus engineers conducted an interesting research. The subject of their work was a new high passenger capacity aircraft. Airbus wanted to end the domination of the Boeing flagship, model 747. Yes, at that time Jumbo absolutely ruled this part of the market, which was pretty annoying to the Boeing's main competitor. Another interesting thing is that at the same time McDonnell Douglas pursued the same goal, developing the double-deck MD-12 airliner. Airbus did not hurry to create their own Jumbo, but the work was continued during the 1990s. In 1994 Airbus activated research project program named A3XX. At the end of the 2000s they fully launched that project development, which now received the name A380. The program would cost nearly 8.8 .8 billion euro, and the future aircraft already received 50 firm orders from 6 launch customers. The name A380 was a break from the standard Airbus families from A300 to A340, but it has a simple explanation. The figure 8 resembles a double-deck cross-section. And in addition, it is a lucky number in some Asian countries, the main predicted market for this plane. After considering various layouts, it was decided not to get carried away by revolutionary design ideas and create a classic aircraft with two full-length decks. This plane was not a revolution, but its efficiency had to be far more superior than the King's, Boeing 747-400. The aircraft configuration was finalized in early 2001 a year after Airbus started the assembly of the first prototype. During all of this, the development cost had grown to 14 billion euros. Eventually, in 2016, the A380 development costs were estimated at 25 billion euros for 15 years. Economists never guess right. The result of their work we've seen on April 27, 2005, when the first Airbus A380 prototype with number FWWOW made its maiden flight in Toulouse, where this plane was assembled. Testing and certification program included five prototypes. During the tests, A380 was accelerated to a maximum speed of 1020 km per hour. Work in heat and high altitude airports was tested in Ethiopia and Colombia, where the airfields are located on altitudes of about 2 km, and the heat and humidity is more than enough. Low temperature tests were conducted mostly in Canada. During the passenger travel tests, the aircrafts traveled across the Europe with nearly 500 Airbus employees. At the end of 2006 the airliner received type certificates from the European and US Civil Aviation Authorities EASA and FAA. The main structural elements are made in France, Germany, Spain and United Kingdom. Considering the aircraft dimensions, the transportation of its large sections is a very big issue. Airbus could not transport details this huge in a usual way. New methods and special equipment for transportation by water and on the roads had been developed. And if the ships are just ships, the road transport wasn't so ordinary. The videos of huge fuselages carried through French villages filled the internet for a long time. The introduction of many innovations and unprecedented size of the airliner had their cost. Airbus faced many problems. The most famous of them is the problem with the cable network. 40,000 connections and 98,000 wires with a total length of 530 kilometers required a redefinition of some systems and elements design. While Airbus engineers were solving this problem, they found out that the problems were caused by different versions of the design software. Germans and Spanish used Katia version 4.0, while British and French Katia version 5.0. Such a small thing caused such big difficulties. Finally, the first airplane was delivered in 2007, 
and entered commercial service with Singapore Airlines. The first flight was made from Singapore to Sydney. For this first travel, passengers bought tickets in an auction, and the most expensive one was bought for $100,000. After two months of operations, Singapore Airlines stated that the A380 has better performance than any other aircraft and it's burning 20% less fuel than Boeing 747-400, also operated in the airline. Ok, now let's take a look at the A380's technical side. A380 is a double-deck, wide-body, four-engine jet airliner. The most noticeable difference from the Boeing 747 and other wide-body airliners is the upper deck, extended along the entire length of the fuselage, with a standard wide-body width. Of course, such a large aircraft cannot be usual. A380's avionics system is based on the new Integrated Modular Avionics System IMA. This architecture has been developed specifically for this plane. Before that, similar systems were only used on military jets, such as F-22 Raptor, F-35 Lightning II and the Salt Rafale. This architecture was applied to make it simpler to control such a big and complex aircraft as the A380. The cockpit is significantly unified with the cockpits of other Airbus planes, as usual, but is still not without innovations. The aircraft has an improved glass cockpit, equipped with 8 displays. In addition to the basic screens on each side of each pilot, there are individual personal computers. Thanks to them, the crew was able to completely abandon the paper documentation in the cabin. The A380's power plant is made of four turbofan engines. Customers can choose between two optional engines, Rolls-Royce Trent 900 and Engine Alliance GP7000. The Trent 900 is a derivative of the Trent 800, and the GP7000 has routes from the GE90 and PW4000. All those engines are actively used on other Airbus and Boeing airliners. Both engines Trent 900 and GP7000 have a similar thrust up to 311 kN. Of course, noise reduction of four such powerful engines was an important requirement for the A380 design and particularly affected engine design. Due to the introduction of the most advanced technology, the noise level was significantly reduced even in comparison with the Boeing 747. The special feature of the A380 power plant is that of the four engines only two are fitted with the thrust reversers, those closer to the fuselage. High aerodynamic quality of the wing allows the airliner to land with a low speed. At first Airbus wanted to make all engines without reversers, but after some research they've elected to equip two engines. But after all, two other engines remained clear, which saved weight and maintained costs. In terms of airframe materials, A380 is a classic modern airliner. Most of the fuselage is made of aluminum alloys. Carbon fiber and other composite materials proportion is nearly 20% of the airframe. And they are used in wings, fuselage sections and tail surfaces. And one more little innovation. The A380 is the first commercial airliner which had a composite central wing box. Taking into account rather modest achievements in terms of materials, in comparison to Boeing 787 and Airbus A350, the airliner provides unprecedented conditions for passengers. Two full-length white decks give the cabin 550 square meters of space. It is 40% more than the Boeing 747-8. The cabin provides higher atmospheric pressure and it is much quieter. The main deck is 6.5 meters wide and the upper deck has widths of 5.8 meters. These dimensions make the cabin the widest in this class. For example, Boeing 777 cabin width is 5.84 meters, and the largest before Boeing 747 main deck width is 6.08 meters. So, wide cabin allows customers to apply significantly different seating configurations, from three cabins of the first class in a row, up to 11 seats in a row in the economy class. In addition, the large spaces allowed the airlines to place in the cabins some elements that could not have been there previously. Recreation areas, bars, shops, lounges or something else, depending on the airline manager's imagination. Two decks can accommodate a maximum of 853 passengers in a single economy class. But this configuration has not yet been applied. Typical for A380 is a three-class scheme, 
for 525 passengers. Usually the capacity of different airlines is somewhere around this figure. Finally, the modifications. A380-800 is the basic version. Actually, for now it's the only flying modification. In 2013 it was slightly updated, increasing range and correcting some little problems. A380-900, the modification with an extended fuselage. It has to accommodate 650 passengers in a 3-class cabin configuration and 900 passengers in a single economy class. For now, the development of this model is postponed. A380F, a cargo version of A380-800. A380F had to carry over 150 tons of cargo which automatically made it the second freighter aircraft in the world, after the unique Antonov An-225 Maria. Airbus collected orders for this model since the beginning of the project. However, due to the difficulties with the passenger version deliveries, the development of the freighter was postponed. All orders for it were cancelled or converted. A380neo is an improved generation of the airliners, with a new wing and new engines. It is supposed to use the updated engines developed by Rolls-Royce from their Trent XWB models, applied for A350. There had to be two versions, A380800neo and A380900neo. But after the market research and talks with the customers, mainly Emirates, the NEO project was also postponed. Airbus considered the sales do not justify spending. But don't worry, it is not the end. In 2017, Airbus announced the A380 Plus project. The updated aircraft will feature up to 80 more seats through more efficient use of cabin space, 13% lower costs per seat, more efficient avionics from A350 airliner, new split wing lengths and updated wing, allowing 4% fuel economy. Airbus plans to start deliveries in 2020. In the beginning of 2018, 13 customers are operating 217 aircrafts. For now, Airbus has firm orders for nearly 100 more A380-800s. The main model customer is Emirates, operating 101 planes and waiting on 41 more planes. The second operator is Singapore Airlines, 19 planes and 5 in order. At the beginning of 2018, one A380-800 cost is reaching 445 million US dollars. Yeah, buying the biggest plane in the world is not a cheap pleasure. But this giant is good and effective. Actually, A380 for now ended the Boeing 747 program. This is sad for aviation enthusiasts, but it shows the efficiency of the European flagship. And it is safe. Despite some accidents during the operations, A380 hasn't been involved in any how lost disasters and had no fatalities. That's the most important thing. Whew, you can find tons of videos and other information about the A380. It's a good thing that the Europeans are not creating any new airliner models for now, and I can calmly make videos about other flying marvels. This is the end of our Airbus marathon for a while. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and comment what do you think about the A380 and the whole Airbus Corporation. Fast flights and soft landings to you.